why should I even learn Python when AI can code for me? This is a question I've been asked quite often recently, but let me tell you a story what happened a couple of weeks ago. My friend uploaded sales data to ChatGPT and asked for data analysis. The code that ChatGPT created was very good, there were no errors and the logic was there, but her insights were completely wrong. And this happened because AI doesn't know your data, your needs and your business. And if you're curious what happened to the insights, ChatGPT decided to remove all negative sales considering it was an error error or an outlier, but in reality it were sales returns. And by removing them, it impacted revenue, it impacted KPIs, it impacted all ratios, and because of that the insights were totally wrong. In this video I will share how I learned Python and went from zero coding to analyzing massive data sets and how you can do that in 2025 even faster than I did it several years ago. If you're new to this channel, I'm Karina. I have transformed my career from finance to data and I've been in data analytics and data science for over 10 years. Let's get real about data analysis in 2025 and look at some stats. Despite all layoffs, the demand for data professionals keep growing. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics projects a 36% of employment growth for data scientists from 2023 to 2033, which is much faster than the average for all occupations. Entry-level data analysts in US can expect salaries ranging from $50,000 to $80,000 per year, depending on factors such as location, industry, and education. And from my experience, this number is similar in Australia. Junior data analysts can expect 55 60 thousand Australian dollars per year and of course this number can be higher depending on location industry and your education senior data analysts typically earn between ninety thousand dollars to one hundred twenty thousand dollars on top of that you can expect bonuses and if you work for startups you can probably expect options but you know working for startups comes with its own bonuses and its own drawbacks like long hours high expectations and less job security because startups can run out of money data scientists can usually expect higher salaries because of their specialized skills the average salary for data scientist in us is approximately 121 thousand dollars per year with additional cash compensation averaging around $17,000. And let's quickly talk about a famous applications built with Python. Instagram's entire backend was built with Python and Django. Instagram threads were also built with Python. Spotify uses Python for data analysis and backend services. Even Reddit was originally built with Python. Why is Python so popular among data people? First of all, it is free, it is open source, and Python syntax is very easy to understand. It is quite similar to human language. Python has massive community and the modules and libraries that you can use are constantly developing because those communities contribute to the growth of this language. Python can handle any data size and work with any data source. And let me quickly tell you my Python story. So initially I learned R and I was very happy with that skill. I didn't want to learn any new language. I was satisfied with where I was in my life. I was working with regex and for some reason there were some issues that I couldn't solve in R, but it seemed like it might be much easier to solve in Python and that would cause me to open that file for the first time in Python and try to tackle it. After that, I reverted to my default option, continued using R, and I was building my first machine learning models also with R. However, at some point, I needed to deploy some of those models into AWS, the best way to deploy it in Python. What I've done for several times, I actually created the whole model in R because it was faster and I was comfortable with the syntax. And then I was Googling how to rewrite it in Python. So I was replicating step by step in Python. And after that, I just decided that it's time to face the fact that I need to learn Python. And I think then something clicked. I started seeing more benefits in Python and I just pushed myself to finally learn it properly. So I learned Python back to force and that's why in this video I want to give my advice how you should approach learning Python in a correct way. For example, with Python, you can not only analyze data, you can work with images. For example, you can remove background or make something transparent. You can create a little program that will clean your desktop and organize all files in folders. You can schedule emails with Python. You can create so much, but you don't need to learn all of that, especially if you want to work in data analytics and data science. 
You can use Python in terminal or you can use development environment. There are different types of development environments. For example, Jupyter Notebooks, which is industry standard, or VS Code or Google Collab. I personally always recommend everyone who is just starting to use Google Collab. To start with Google Collab, you don't need to install anything in your machine. You will not face any permission errors or some problems with drivers. All you need to have is Gmail account, which is free, and then you just Google Google Collab. You have your development environment, and now you can start coding. The first thing you need to learn in Python is data types. And there are different data types, but the one that you will be using all the times are numbers, which is integers and floats, strings, which is text, lists, which is data collection, and dictionaries, which is key value paths. As a data analyst, you need to learn the following modules. Pandas, NumPy, and visualization libraries like Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Plotlib. Pandas library is used for data analysis and data manipulation. It can work with tabular data like CSV files, Excel files. It provides data structures like data frames and series for structured data manipulation. This module allows you to easily handle missing data, reshape it. It can help you work with time series data so to create some rolling sums. There are two new libraries that can compete with Pandas, Polaris and Fireducks. They can work with bigger files and do it much faster. I highly recommend you to start with Pandas because this way you will be able to understand a code written by someone else and edit it. But of course, later you can explore Polars and Fireducks and pick your favorite. The next module you should be learning is NumPy. It is very popular because it can perform numerical computations and work with multidimensional arrays. NumPy is basis for many other libraries such as Pandas that we've discussed before and SciPy. NumPy supports mathematical operations such as element-wise multiplication, addition, and statistical calculations. NumPy can efficiently handle large datasets and perform vectorized operations which are faster than Python loops. And if you're interested what is an array, in programming, array is used to store multiple values in a single variable. NumPy is very commonly used in data science for processing datasets and implementing algorithms. It is also used in image and audio processing, so when we are working with pixels or audio samples. And once you tackled NumPy and Pandas, you need to learn how to visualize your data. And for that, you need to learn Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Plotlib. Matplotlib is a very standard library by Python. In my opinion, Seaborn can create more visually appealing visuals, while Plotlib can create interactive visuals. In this video, we talk about how to turn your Matplotlib visuals from this to this, how to add all the titles, headers, trend lines, grid lines, and other things. And my tip about learning Python, nothing can teach you better than writing your own code. No matter how many tutorials and courses you've done, only when you start writing your own code and face different issues, this is when you start understanding how coding works, syntax works, and how to avoid these mistakes in the future. For me, the best way to learn new skills is by applying it in real life, by doing some projects, for example. So if you're just starting learning Python, start with a specific project in mind. For example, you already have done several data analytics projects in Excel and SQL. Try to replicate those projects in Python. And what I mean, upload the same file, create a table, which is a pandas data frame, add new columns, remove other columns, group data, pivot data, sort data. Every time you doing some action, for example, filtering, print the data frame and compare results to the results in SQL and Excel. This way you can make sure that all your filters filtering is done correctly or grouping or pivoting that you didn't exclude those negative sales or done something incorrectly. So you're not only learning to code, you're actually learning how to perform data analysis, making sure that all numbers match and everything is accurate. And my last tips are start with real data day one and by real data it can be your bank account data, it can be data that you already used for other data analytics projects. Build, don't just learn, so instead of watching more and more tutorials, start applying those skills and write your own code. And once you start, Google and watch video how to go further, how to solve that specific issue. Of course, it's 2025, so you can and probably should use AI to help you with that. So you can use ChatGPT, Copilot or Claude. 
but please use it wisely. So instead of asking it to create you the whole code, you can either ask it to debug the code that you wrote, ask it to explain different concepts. For example, why do we use double square brackets when we want to select columns or how to use list comprehensions and lambda function. Another tip is to join communities. There are plenty of them on Reddit, Discord, LinkedIn, and other social media. And of course, document everything and create your own little cheat sheets so you don't need to look up the syntax next time. Remember that in 2025, you don't need to be a coding genius. You just need to be a problem solver who knows how to use Python efficiently. And if you're ready to take the next step, watch this pandas video.